So this is a DAW I've been using lately. It's called Luna from Universal Audio. A friend of mine, Harris from Universal Audio, actually reached out to me and said, hey man, you want to uh, have a little challenge? These are the challenges he set forth. I am going to accomplish all of them, of course. They're not paying me to use this DAW or say anything nice about them. Universal Audio is just an awesome brand and they're friends of mine, so I'm promoting their gear and making some awesome music in the process and trying to adhere by these guidelines. So I have a setup here. I got two guitar tracks, audio tracks. Not sure which guitar amps I'm gonna use yet. This is Shape, it's really like this entire MIDI workstation. You can do drums, you can do a variety of different synthesizers and many, many things. So we have two instances of this actually where we can do one that is just one sound and then the challenge has laid out we will use one where it layers four different MIDI sounds at once. And then moving on here we have Ravel and I'm gonna change the color of Ravel uh, to purple because purple. And Ravel, as far as I understand, is just an amazing piano. So uh, pianos are good. I'm sure we'll find a place for that in a cinematic environment. And finally, one that I'm kind of excited about, the Mini Moog. I'm gonna make that one green. The Mini Moog apparently is the cream of the crop that Universal Audio has been working on for quite some time. And in case you don't know what a Mini Moog is, it's that sound. All these different awesome instruments, but really the reason that I use Luna a lot is because the sound quality is just on a different level. And because of that, I, I would recommend wearing headphones or using some nice studio monitors if you can while you watch this video because you're gonna notice some of the things that I'm talking about a little bit easier that way, especially when I get to like this Neve summing and this tape saturation. Uh, it's just really cool, and the, the best thing about Luna is that it's actually free if you have a Mac and a piece of UA gear, so. I'm very pumped about it. Let's start writing some music. So I'm thinking post-apocalyptic vibe. So that's what I'm gonna go for. And that's sort of like my tendency as a musician is to just write epic stuff. And maybe that's why people always tell me I write uh, music that sounds like it should be in a video game. <laughs> so I'll take that as a compliment. Let's see what I come up with first. I'm gonna start, I think, with some drums and that's really gonna shape the groove that I'm going for. I'm going for this kind of trance-like uh, roving, industrial, maybe uh, futuristic. How many more adjectives can I say before I actually just play something? Let's go. All right, so we got shape here. As you can see, these are all different MIDI sounds, electric guitars, effects, horns, keys, leads, organs. So basically I equate this one plugin to the entirety of, for example, Logic Pro. Every MIDI sound in their entire library, this one plugin essentially contains. So we're gonna go with drums first. All right, focus. How about something analog? Ah. Uh. I like that kick. That's pretty fat and kind of you know, round. Good for something synthy. What's the snare like? I like both of those. This is kind of the groove I'm thinking of. I'm just gonna lay that down and get started. So we can easily record enable this. Here we can just quantize all this. And those are just, I'll do eighth notes, but they're quarter notes technically. Perfect robotic time. I wanna get some harmonic textures going on here. I have this arpeggiated sound in my head. So I'm gonna to go to the Mini Moog first and find a sound that I like, something kind of ethereal maybe, but still powerful. And the thing to remember about the Moog is it is monophonic, so I can't play chords, but there are chords built in, so like a ninth. That's a chord. Technically, I'm only playing one note. So let's find major triad. That's nice. Maybe a minor triad though. Because major triad, I mean, major, that's not post-apocalyptic. But maybe I don't wanna be locked into a minor triad when I wanna like go to another note. Because that does that's a modulation, but I think I have a way around this. So let's find something a little traditional sounding. Not that. Okay, 
not that. Let's go to bass. This is really what the Mini Moog does best is bass tones. No sooner did I say it than did I find what I was looking for. So, how do I get a chord out of this? I'm not getting anything out of that. So, what I can do is use this tool that I learned about called ARP, and it is going to arpeggiate whatever I want, so whatever notes I hold down will be arpeggiated. So before I was just stuck to one tone. That's exactly what I'm going for. That kind of mysterious, like kind of ominous sound that I really associate that with Daft Punk. So that should quantize very easily. Now I'm hearing this that kind of thing in the background. So with that, we're gonna do a layered synth that is gonna be kind of more industrial sounding. We're gonna use shape for that. I'm gonna choose four different synths here. And this is gonna take a second, so um, without boring you too much in the sound searching, I'm gonna just uh, fast forward real quick. I'm gonna go with that one for the first one. Remember, these are starting to stack on top of each other, so it's a really cool way to uh, kind of vet if they mesh well. I think we've got our low end covered. Let's get a little bit of harmonic texture up in the top, maybe mid-range area. Now the thing about this is they're all concentrating down in the same register. So what I'm gonna do is change the octave of these uh, next two. Here we go, transpose. So I can transpose this up 12 steps, AKA an octave. That's awesome. And another cool thing I can do is actually blend these. I'm gonna pick my last sound and then I can choose how much of which sound I want to come through. What is sequence? I was gonna program that, but now I don't have to. Okay, <laughs> that's uh, serendipitous. Is so cool. All right, now we're gonna take out some of the swamp thing. I think there's a little too much swamp thing. off like that. <laughs> Other programs I've used is just like tah, silence. This is just like a, a musical ending to the record sequence. Let's go with something I guess in the higher register with an underlying percussive element maybe in one of the shape slots. <laughs> that sounds pretty good actually. I think that'll give it the girth it needs. And then let's get something real low. Oh, that's what I need. I have an idea where I'm gonna go with this next. It's gonna go. Do and it's gonna turn major. I think I want this section to build and establish the mood before we go down to that epic major chord. Add another section here. And the cool thing about Universal Audio, and this is before Luna even came out, they have easily the best amp emulation out there. So I am going to choose the best guitar amp in Universal Audio's collection, which is the Diesel VH4. I think it's their newest one too. 
and we're gonna go to the presets. We are gonna find the lead studio delay. This is my favorite sound, and I've already <laughs> kind of memorized my favorite presets. I should save these, but I just kind of like tweaking it a little bit based on the session. Pull the time down and pull the mix down a little bit on this and the volume down just so we don't crack through the decibel level. And let me grab this guitar. Plug into the old Apollo X8P. That's how you know it works. That's why that's the best amp. So now let's go to just loop this and see if I can come up with just something like. Okay, I, I like those first notes. Sometimes it just happens. I do need much more delay and reverb to fit the atmosphere. So let's go back and turn this mix. Basically, we need more feedback and the time needs to be later. I mean, the delay didn't do that pinch harmonic, but chord effects, these are effects that are gonna be written. I will go grab the Capital Chambers, which is an awesome reverb plugin. And the great thing about Luna 2 is that I can use all these insane plugins and the DSP is just running at an extremely good clip, so I'm not buffering, there's no latency. Yeah, that's the tone I'm looking for. Let's record. I think I have half of it already. I don't want this to be too busy. Remember, we're going epic video game movie, so uh, we want the theme to be strong, but the melody to be simple. It has my favorite note in it as the focal point, the nine. Let's double that, make it a little stronger. Now, we're gonna change the chord, and this melody's gonna happen again and sound 20 times as epic. We'll mute the guitars, and you'll hear what I'm talking about here. I'm hearing it come And now is a perfect time to go into Ravel, which is the piano, and add some ambiance to this section as the guitar is playing to just kind of give a little bit more interesting qualities to the melody. And we'll put some reverb and stuff on that. Obviously, we could go with some dream verb. Hmm, a Jurassic cave? How about spacey? Or we can do this inverse echo. And I think the last place it has to go is home, but an octave below. This note. It's sort of a sense of completion to the harmony and well that is it
Well, that sounds pretty sick. A couple things I want to show you here. One of the greatest parts of Luna is the Neve summing. If you don't know what a Neve console is, it's just one of the most iconic studio consoles ever. And instead of paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to have one in your house, you can have one in your computer. We'll turn it off first. So you can hear, it just injects this sort of life and presence into a mix. As far as what Neve Summing actually does, I would direct you to the Universal Audio website. I know that maybe a lot of you aren't engineers, you're guitar players, you just like hearing what it does. But uh, essentially, it sprinkles magic sauce all over the music. And the cool thing is these are all routed through buses and I have various effects on these buses to save CPU power that way as well. So I have a distressor which is a compressor and that's going to be on the drums. I also have some reverb on the drums. I have EQ and compressor on the guitars. I want to show you what I did with the guitars. It's pretty cool. I have the two doubles but I also have this synth. And it just adds this little mid-range presence to the melody because this is supposed to be like a soaring melody. You want to kind of flesh it out. So without that synth, here's just the guitars. Now I'll add it in. The cool thing about the Neve summing also, just to put a bow on that, is it emulates the panning that you would find in an Eve console. So this signal is split in a stereo. So I'm able to have these two mono guitars pan left and right. And then I have just the juicy mid range bump happening a little bit, not necessarily covering the guitars, but it's just a little cool trick that I like to do with me melodies that I want to be more powerful is doubling them with like a synth or maybe a different timbre of guitar or something like that. And then I want to show you this little mini Moog bass fill because it just is, it kind of ushers in the next section and I really like it and I just want you to hear it on its own. Inspiration from that little riff and so awesome. It's not the same riff, obviously, but it's like that little kind of legato-y with the pitch shifting wheel. The last little finishing touch here, it's sort of similar to the Neve summing, is the tape, uh, which you can add these little tape saturations from the Studer plugin that they use here in Universal Audio. You can add it to as many tracks as you want. It just adds that extra kind of juice. So, so here's without tape. So just like the Neve summing, it just adds this extra bit of transience and saturation and character to the sound. You can put that on every single instrument and just have even more life. I think the last thing to do is mindlessly shred over this little piece of music that I created because you know, there's the theme song that happens during the epic part of the video game or the movie. But then there's the ending credits that has the extended cut where the guitar player just has their way with the uh, theme. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I hope you enjoyed this little look into my creative process using some really cool hardware and software. And until next time, keep shredding.